I think if there's any way that we can have the meet tonight, we want to wrap it up. I don't think anyone wants to come back again. Uh, you know, I think we're ready to get on with our lives. Welcome to the Big Show. I'm Paul Ream, joined by expert sports analyst Jonathan Houghton. After raining cats and dogs for the past three evenings, Southampton brought their boots and stomped on all of the poodles here at CCV. That's right, John. Southampton beat CCV uh, 1,506 to 1,126. That's a 480-point win. Those swordfish sure took the poodles for a walk. Actually, Paul, I think they changed their mascot to the devilfish. I don't even think those exist, John. Nonetheless, swimmers from Southampton turned up the heat and fried them fish to a hell of a crisp. Sure thing. Now, let's take a look at some of tonight's action. While the evening was still young, swimmer Virginia Young from Southampton showed CCV how it was done Southampton style, winning her 100 meter breaststroke by an astonishing lead. You go, girl. Here's Southampton swimmer Lee Morg about to step up onto the block for his 100 meter breaststroke event. There's been a lot of talk about whether Lee Mork will beat Jonathan Houghton in this race or not, but from the beginning it looks like he comes out strong stroking. Oh, going into the turn, it's dead even. We'll see how this one turns out, folks. And it's still neck and neck, but maybe Lee can pull it off. Oh, but it looks like Jonathan's taking taking the win. Better luck next time, Lee. What a great sport. Um. Okay. Moving on. Here's one of our younger swimmers getting ready to light up the water with her excellent butterfly. Just look at that stroke, John. Look how her arms are coming out of the water. Great technique. I don't think I've seen better, ever. Oh, and she could. She could go all the, the, the way. Correct me if I'm wrong, John, but uh, I don't see too much shiny hiney in this oh, one. Not at all. Oh, there's one. Huh? <laughs> Here's Thad Lewis swimming with his broken arm. Unfortunately, he did uh, obtain a DQ in this race. Ooh, and this is a very close race with all of these being from Southampton. Southampton turned out the numbers in their senior department, and this is probably one of the reasons that they crushed CCV so badly. Oh, and here's Jonathan Houghton versus Dan Bowling. This is a close race, both looking cool as the underside of a pillow. It's coming down to the end, and yes, Jonathan gets his first triple win ever. Ooh. And now we're into the relays. All transitions and turns were fantastic, which led to a great... Oh. This just in. Stuart Ferguson is good. Breaking news, breaking news here, folks. And here's Cap Young. Pulling out to an almost 25 lead. That is just ridiculous, folks. Ridiculous. Oh my gosh. He's lapping them like a dog with spilled ice cream.
In case you were wondering what I was drawing during some of tonight's highlights, it's a cat. Just a cat. After lasting four days, Summers had a lot to say about this meme. So really, what do you think of the meme being postponed yet again? The lays in every case is so good. Oh yeah. We're here with Swim Team Advisor Mike Stott. We'd like to ask him a few questions about this unprecedented four-day meet. Mike, uh, how long has a meet ever lasted before this day? In my time, which is 1979, there have been five three-day meets. This is the first four-day meet in my recollection. Uh, do you foresee this happening at any time in the future, and uh, what repercussions might this have in the league? I, I, do, I do not see this happening again, and I think it will be made very clear to reps at the next JREC meeting that uh, the meet is to be with safety in mind, to be concluded as early as possible to me. Do you think there were uh, any uh, errors in judgment uh, in the first two days of the meeting? Swimming is always about judgment, and uh, I'm not one to ascribe blame or uh, or give anybody a free pass. I think there were opportunities Tuesday probably to swim in. All right, thank you very much. No, get it with some feeling. Go Southampton! There you go. All right, thanks. <laughs> There's a lot of hype going into this relay about how we were going to perform and whether we would go one, two, three or not. So, how do you think you performed overall? Well, you know, what I like to do is like to go out there, get 110%, see what happens, you know, you know, I'm, I just, you know, just kind of free, you know, make really the results speak for themselves. We got the one, two, three. That's true. SRA all the way, strap for streets. Strap for streets! In these troubled times, you, you got to keep on keeping on. You got to come what you got to do, and you got to, you got to do what you did. You got to know that you're going to do what you did. It's true. Very true. But not focus on what you didn't do. What you didn't. It's team effort. It's team effort. What was it like having to come back four nights in a row and not knowing whether you would swim or not each night? You know, it uh, it really drains on all three aspects of a great athlete. First of all, physically, you got to come in, do a meet each day. Second of all, mentally, you got to get yourself up. You got to get hyped each and every day. Most importantly, spiritually, deep down in your soul and your core. You come in, you want to swim in a meet, all of a sudden God throws a lightning bolt down at you, you can't do it. Each night you think, is God, is God want this meet to happen? Yeah, I, it's a real drain on you, physically, I spiritually, could. mentally. I totally agree. And, you know, personally, I don't mind coming four nights in a row, because um, for my contract, I'm getting paid 1.5 mil per meet. So, you know, I had no problem with it. You know, in trouble times such as these, you got to keep on keeping on. you got to... You gotta be ready all every night to, to do what you're gonna do. You gotta do what you're doing without thinking about what you did. But while doing what you're gonna do. That was an excellent statement. We're here with Thad Lewis, uh, junior swimmer for our team. Excellent. And uh, Thad, a lot of people thought you were uh, not be able to do very well with this uh, cast on your arm. Now uh, tell us about that. How did you do this evening? Uh, I DQ'd in my fly. <laughs> but. <laughs> I got two seconds so far, I think. Sounds good. Thank you, Thad. You're welcome. <laughs> We're with Coach Mike Peters. Mike, this meet lasted an unprecedented four days. What kind of toll did that take on you as a coach? Uh, it takes a toll on us. It's a little difficult to get up every day, make sure you're ready to uh, cheer on the kids, focus on the swims. But uh, you just have to do it. It's part of your job. It's part of life. Some things don't work out like you're supposed to. But our kids did a great job, and uh, I think overall, we went as best as it could with the uh, difficulties we had. Excellent. We're here with CCB coach Mike McKee, and uh, we'd like to ask him a few questions. Uh, Mike, how does it feel uh, after uh, losing meet after meet to Sacramento? Well, honestly, this is my first year, so it's the first time I got to taste defeat to Southampton, but you know, I'm sure we get used to it after a while. Right, uh, <laughs> any things that you could attribute to this loss? Uh, lack of older swimmers, especially boys. I don't know how you guys do it, but you keep them coming back. And thank you very much, Coach. All right, thank you. Sports Center here with former Coach Dave Holland. Well done. It's great to be back here with Southampton. So you think the legacy is terrific? What is it? The legacy is terrific, John. Well, after four days of trial and tribulation. I think we've all gotten somewhere, spiritually, mentally, meteorologically. From the sports desk, signing off, I'm Jonathan Houghton. And I'm Paul Ream. We'll see you Monday, Southampton. <laughs>